واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله We are grateful to Almighty Allah, the Lord of the world, the most gracious, the most merciful. We thank Him, we praise Him. We seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil consequences of our deeds. Whoever Allah has guided, there is none that can mislead. And whoever has gone astray, there is none that can bring the person back to the path of guidance. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We give thanks to Allah for all things at all times. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the best of all mankind, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, and all believing men and women from now to the day of judgment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Today is a good day, today is a happy day. Mm. The goalpost, that title suggests something about soccer something about football and we can picture uh, the real goal post in our minds we can see the bars the players we see the goalkeepers we can imagine that we are looking at a football pitch so let's look at it what do we stand to learn from this today so what we refer to as just a mere crossbar or goal post is actually a paradise for the footballer, for the person that is playing to win or playing to score. The number of times they're able to do that, when they see this goal post, it means a whole lot of things to them. And sometimes it determines whether they win the match or they lose the match. Sometimes it determines whether they go home with the trophy or they don't go home with the trophy. In many instances, it is just as it is. People run around in a sort of communal mayhem, as uh, said by somebody, in order to ensure that they put this ball inside the goalpost. And this is the matter that it is. So they count the number of times they actually score. And this scoring as it is, it was explained by some sources that people, whenever the ball gets into the net, they will you know, make a mark on the, on the goal post. So they score a mark on it. So that's why they say they score. It's a score. It's a goal and they score how many? They count the number of times they score or make the mark on the, uh, on the goal post. So that's why they say it is scoring. Scoring as in etching something or marking something or scratching one into it if you have scored one. If one has entered, you score the goal post one. And of course, there are many other ways of doing that now, uh, more uh, modern methods of counting this, including using technology to determine and ascertain whether the ball actually entered or hit the bar or crossed the line that we can refer to as um, a goal being scored. This is very beautiful. Then we have the metaphors that go along with the um, goal. And we say the goal post has been shifted. It's a metaphor that's derived from um, um, this kind of sport, especially this football or the soccer we are talking about. I may be using these interchangeably, football or soccer. And so when they say they have shifted somebody's goal post, it means the person has been, uh, the process has been changed. It means the, what is supposed to be the result has been altered. It means there's a perceived unfairness in changing the goal that somebody is trying to achieve after there's an agreement that this is going to be the goal. It means expectations have been changed. It means um, something has been altered from what it's supposed to be. It means the rules of the game must have been changed. It means the results too has been changed. It means the meaning of the game you are playing has also been changed. If you say somebody has changed the goal post. So we say the, the goal post has been changed. We also use that in marriage, for instance, where couples change each other's expectations. You think you have become crazy because the person is a narcissist. A laugh at that. Now, that is an example of the metaphor of changing the goal post as we know it. Then let's think about the whole game as a whole, the, the game itself as a whole. The football match shows temporality of time. 
meaning that the soccer helps to explain the peculiar way our perception and affective experience of time are neither linear nor constant. Lived time is not the same thing as clock time. You understand what I mean? It, it means clock time is your sequence of this is now or that was then or this is going to be later. It's a kind of continuum when you look at the clock time. But the lived time is what did you do within that time? What did you achieve within that period, that space, that gap, that opportunity, that moment? What did you do? What did you achieve? So time is something that is not linear to say we are taking it from here to there. It is not governed by the clock. The real concept of time is shaped by a lot of things. The environment is one of them. The world that we are inhabiting at that particular time is another thing that will let you know, that will let you have the experience of time. In soccer, for example, it is very compelling and obvious that you see that there's 90 minutes of game, right? For the five minutes, first half, for the five minutes, second half. So there's the objective measure of temporality that you are not going to play this game forever. It is just for 90 minutes. And so every game lasts as long as the last game. Every game lasts as long as the game lasts. But our experience of the time is very different. Let me give you an example of what one author gave as an Estonian twin example. There are twins watching the football match. One twin is on this side supporting one uh, football club. The other twin is supporting the other football club. As the game was going on, it was one goal, one goal to zero. One nil. Now, at the last two minutes of the game, maybe there was injury time. Aha, let's add injury time. That injury time is very fast to one twin and is very slow to the other twin. One twin that is winning, see it as very slow. The other twin that is losing, sees it as very fast. In other words, we don't judge time the same way. And that's why we say the clock time is not the same thing as living time. You may be at home watching a movie, you will not know when two hours have passed. But someone who is in the hospital, struggling with one form of pain or the other, knows that two hours is a long time. Especially if they say, sorry, the doctor that will treat you will be here in two hours' time. It's the same two hours. But you can see the feelings are different. Gisting and playing and relaxing, two hours for them is not the same thing as two hours for a woman who is in labor. They say, madam, you have to hold on. The ambulance that will convey you to the hospital will be here in two hours' time. And this woman is in labor. The water has broken. The nurse is not around. The doctor is yet to be seen. Now you see the difference in time now. So that is what one of the things you learn from soccer. You see that time is temporary. And what you feel about time is different at every point in time. What do you achieve within that 90 minutes of the football match? That time can suddenly compress, and that time can even be expanded, even though it's still the same thing. The question is, what is happening at any one point or the other? Within that 90 minutes, something is always happening. People are not sleeping. People are not resting. The players are not lying down. They are all standing. Even the goalkeeper is standing at the goal, not that he'll be there chatting with his girlfriend. He will be there with his eyes even when the players are at the other side of the pool. Something is happening, but people are not necessarily scoring goal every time, but something is going on. And that's the joy. That's the joy of the game itself. It is watching. That's the joy. There can be fantastic games sometimes where nobody scores. But for those who understand and who enjoy watching football, they enjoy every moment of it because something is actually happening at every point in time. 
one opponent may be slowing down so that the time will pass and they run away with their one goal to zero. The other party may be running helter skelter. It may be some tactics that are being in play. It may be that the other side is trying to weigh down the opponent. You know how you play on exhaustion? You get your opponent exhausted. You play very wide. You are here and you, you slow down until when somebody is coming to take the ball from you. Then you kick it very far away to meet the other player on the other side. Another person from Lublin will have to run to go and mark that one. Then I will kick to another long distance. You keep making them to run up and down just to weigh them down. Those who understand soccer, they know a tactic is at play. Something is going on. So there's also something about the manipulation in the football match or the frustration that you put on your, your, your opponent. With time, you get all of this. Within that 90 minutes, you have the manipulation. Within that 90 minutes, you have the frustration. Within that 90 minutes, you have the exhaustion. It depends on what you are playing and how you are going about it. In other words, as people continue to play, if it eventually results into goals, you now see the different types of goals. Some goals are very beautiful. You know, you say, they say that's a very excellent goal, very beautiful goal. Some goals are 30 yard free kicks. Some goal, it's penalty, and you see how it is done. Some goals, it is from corner kick. The person is able to swerve the ball inside. And then you see passes, you see defenses, you see all of these things. You see goals, and some of the goals are a lot of defenses. Most of the goals are just easy and simple tap-ins. The other players have done the work. The excellent passing from the goalkeeper at the other side, showing it to the leg of one of them. Or if he kicks it, if he kicks it out, the person that headed and, you know, chested and controlled the ball. They have done a lot of work before the person who scored the goal eventually get the pass and it just chips in and then it's a goal. A lot of work has been done and I want you to learn that also from this goal post discussion we are having. The student who passed the exam has studied sufficiently for long hours. The exam itself may just be one hour. All of the students were given equal time to write the exam. But those who had passed are those who had worked hard, who had read hard, who had done all their preparation, who had done all the trainings, even before the day of the match. They had played match, they had lost, they have played against themselves, they have done all of these things, they have suffered and trained. A student will not just pass an exam within one hour. It is something you had done right from time. You see the father that has saved money for many months. You just see an alert one day, he just paid the school fees of his children. The moment of paying school fees of his children may not be more than one minute. But this man had worked for four months, saving money and saving money and saving money. In other words, if you compare to the game of football or soccer, you will see that the person who eventually scored the goal is not the person who did all the work. Some other persons have done a lot of that even before the match. They have done a lot of that during the match and then they gave him the ball that so he was able to score. A mother has spent her whole life in child upbringing. But you see her dancing on the daughter's wedding day. She dances with so much joy as if she's crazy. That's a combination of many years of raising a girl from baby to adolescent, from training to fighting with her, to disciplining her, to denying her of some things, to training and teaching and coaching her on certain things that she's expected to do. So on the wedding day, when you see her hijab very big, bigger than other people, and you see her smiling more than others, it is possibly because she has worked for it. The easy tap in of the responsible man showing up to marry her daughter is because she has really worked hard to train her daughter well, to have been attractive to others, and the people are so attracted to her good character and good demeanor. These are the things. It's also about, about preparation for many things that we do in life. 
you have been working hard, going to work early and closing late. Until one day when your promotion letter comes or when there's an award to be given to the best staff. And people see you walk outside and be recognized. And they think that was your moment. Yes, it was your moment. But before you score that goal, it had been a lot of work, a lot of preparation, a lot of stuff. This is one thing I don't want us to forget about the, the play of soccer or football. Football is also about space and the interpretation of space. You have the football pitch to play on, not outside the lines. Everybody has got to maintain their field of play. The football pitch is there, just like in life, we also have our own football pitch where to play. You can only play within that place, within that space, and you have to get to make the best use of it. Whatever number you are playing, if you are number one, let's assume you are a goalkeeper, you know your territory, you know where you're supposed to stay, you know where you're supposed to manage, and you know how you're supposed to excel within that space that you are. If you are number 10, or number 9, or you are an attacker or a defender, or number four, whichever one you are, you got to understand you only have the football pitch to play, no matter your number. Even if you are number zero, you don't play outside the lines. You play within what you have. A fundamental part of what it means to be involved in soccer is an experience. And this experience is in watching and being watched. In watching others, and being watched. This is how we play the game of life. The spectating part is not auxiliary, it's not ordinary. It's a fundamental part of the experience for both the players and the fans or the spectators. People talk about the spectators sometimes as 12th player because, you know, apart from 11 that are playing in one part of the, of the teams, the 12th player will be the spectator. Let me unpack what I'm saying for you to understand very well. What I mean is, in the game of life, you are playing, people are watching you. You are also watching others play. It's dual thing you are doing here as a game player. As you are looking at others, other people are looking at you. How you play and how they play, one is going to influence the other. So when I talk about the 12, um, player, I'm referring to spectator and the fans. The fans can fundamentally affect what happens in a game. And this is why there's what we call home advantage, which is the most mysterious thing. Because why will it matter? It will matter because the presence of the fans will have effect on the game. If the fans are cheering you up, you are likely going to do well. If the fans are booing you down, it's likely going to affect how you play. You may be playing well in your own opinion, but if you surround yourself with, with fans that do not appreciate your running up and down, if you surround yourself in life with fans that keep booing you down instead of cheering you up, Scoring life goals will be very, very difficult, if not sometimes almost impossible. Bring it to marriages. Are you a hero to your spouse? Are you a hero to your wife? As the man running up and down, is your wife cheering you up or she's booing you down? As a woman, does your husband cheer you on? Is your husband your cheerleader, so to speak? Does he even appreciate what you are doing? Sometimes, no matter how much we look at it, if you have the fans, if you have the spectators, if you have the audience that do not cheer you up, if you have friends that do not cheer you up, if you have neighbors that don't cheer you up, if you have, you know, business associates that don't appreciate what you do, ah, Scoring life goals will be very difficult. And sometimes when we talk about home advantage, try to surround yourself with the people that make you feel at home when you are playing the games of life. Home advantage is such that 
you remember many of these um, countries that host football matches, the World Cup. Uruguay, for instance, I think that was the first place where the World Cup was hosted, and Uruguay won, and they got the, the gold, you, you know, they, they got the trophy. If in your own case, you don't look for a home advantage in playing your live matches, things can be very difficult. In other words, cultivate the kind of home that is going to cheer you up. Cultivate the kind of family that is going to support your struggles and your hustles. Cultivate the kind of environment that's going to support your runnings up and down. Your pursuant of your goals in life. Let there be people that even when you miss the goal, they will still cheer you up and encourage you to do it all over again. Football matches can be very repetitive. It's the same thing, the same kick, the same people, but there are certain differences in the way people play them. If you throw the ball in, or you kick it in, or you head it in, or you do what we call somersault, and you kick it in, or you do some hard tricks, whichever one you do, so long as it results in a goal, it's still supposed to be okay for you. Whichever direction the ball comes through, it is still a goal. There should be people that will see that you kick over the bar, yet they will encourage you to try it again. Because that over the bar may be the one that will eventually come in and the goalkeeper will not be able to catch it. In other words, you need people that are going to cheer you up, not to boo you down. Let me mention another thing you may learn from the goalpost, from the football match. Football matches is, are not just a play. Soccer is not just a play. There's something about the phenomenon of play. What we do when we play. The way in which, when we are aware of something being played, then we can give ourselves to it as much as we can. In other words, there's something mysterious about playing games. Games can be very mysterious. It may look like play, but there are some aspects of seriousness to it. When they say there's going to be a football match, they say they are going to play. It's, it sounds like play, right? But this is the profession of some people. It sounds like play because they call it play, but it requires certain seriousness, certain knowledge and know-how, certain depth of training and technicalities of the coaches and, you know, the people who refer to as technical people. Technical, what do they call them? Apart from the coach that is um, running after them to kick the ball correctly, there are still strategists. Yes, who plan whether it is 4 4 2 or 2 2 4, anyhow they term it. There are still those who do that. It may look like ordinary play, and that is why life itself is not just a play, it's a serious matter. In marriage, is bedroom business just a play? Husband and wife, they play, right? Don't they play? When they lock the bedroom and they are both inside, they play. But does bedroom performance not affect the marriage as a whole? In a way, it's, it looks like play, but does it not require serious healthy engagement? Is it not sacred? Is it not private? Is it not important? Is it not serious? Even though we say couples play in their bedroom, it is this play, actually, sometimes, that reflects the seriousness of that marriage. It is this play in the bedroom, sometimes, that determines whether the marriage is successful or not. I say sometimes, because we, we don't want to overgeneralize. But what I'm trying to say is, it's a play, it's a play, but it's serious. Life games, life issues also may look like games, may look like plays, but there are some seriousness that has to be, you know, some seriousness that have to be attached to the whole game of life. The way people often play soccer better is when they are immersed in the flow without even thinking about it. When you see the footballer or the, the player seem to have merged with the ball itself. In fact, between him and the football, there's a control and there's a preemptiveness between them. The ball is coming to him. He knows where the ball will land. He knows how the ball is rolling. He knows how to control it. He knows whether to chest it and knee it. He knows whether to kick it or head it. He is making direct interaction, a kind of 
conversation between him and the ball that is coming. There's a kind of calculation as he's having the ball between his legs, as he's running with the ball, as he's trying to dodge the opponent, as he's trying to dribble the opponent, and he's also trying to calculate where his teammate is for him to pass the ball vis-a-vis -vis where the goal post is and the attention of the goalkeeper. It's a serious matter. It is like a play, but at the point the flow comes in. And then you will see how these players, how they run, how they calculate, how they miss sometimes, how they pass sometimes, and how they stay sometimes when they have to stay, how they let go sometimes. He wants to score, but he has seen that if he tries to score by himself, there may be an attacker and there may be an obstacle, so he can let go. He will pass to another person that can do a better job. It's a whole lot of things. It's not just play. The same thing with the matters of life. The same thing with the games of life. You may let it flow. You may take it easy, but be very calculative about it. And sometimes you may let go. It's not only you that can score the goal, you know, for instance. Some other people may be better to achieve certain things than you. So if you're in a workplace, you work with a team, it may not be who does what that is most important, but it is what is achieved at the end of it all that may be much more important. In marriages too, there may be Mr. Husband and there may be Madam Wife, but in playing certain key roles in the family, to score the real goal, to achieve the best of everything, sometimes, even if it comes to discipline the children, sometimes Mr. Husband may just leave your wife to handle it from the mother perspective. She may know how better to call the child and to talk to the child. Sometimes you may let the father handle it from the baba, from the father's perspective. It may need to be stern, it may need to be firm. It may need to be cold, it may need to be hard. It may need to do any of these things. Sometimes it might need to smack your child. Sometimes it might need to discipline that child. Sometimes, your husband may need to deny the child something if you must achieve the goal. It is not really to say it must be done in this particular way, but the reality is that you have to understand exactly what you are looking for and what kind of goal you want to achieve in child upbringing. And that's just an example. Then, another thing you must take notice of is what is your focus? What is your focus? in this match that you are playing? What is your focus in the game that you are playing? What do I mean by this? You need to develop the ability not to focus on only the goals, but also on the process. And when I say this, there are two schools of thought about this. There are those who see football as a gesture in the service of beauty. You know, they have the idea of, of a romantic, aestheticization of football. That is, they see football as something very beautiful. The way you wear the jerseys, if you, if you look at the story of jerseys that people wear, the way they started from wearing just ordinary things to things that are colorful, to jerseys that are designed, the way the jerseys are, are, are branded, sometimes you see the names of some companies that are sponsoring some part of the game. Sometimes you see the names of the footballers themselves, you know, written somewhere near their number. All of those branding and everything, the colorful appearances, the ceremonial ways that we approach scoring of goals, the way a footballer will score and he will somersault to entertain the spectators and to celebrate the victory of scoring a goal. All of these are meant to be beautiful. Some people look at football matches as that. Let it be beautiful. Let it be nice. Beautiful passes, excellent dribbling, and very nice scoring. Simple passes and very nice shots. All of these things are supposed to be beautiful. The way the goalkeeper would dive, you know, to catch the ball. This is supposed to be beautiful. We are supposed to be entertained. This is how some people look at football match. But some other school of thought said it is not like that. 
football is supposed to be dirty. Sometimes it has got to be compromising. Sometimes you have got to focus on winning. You've got to focus on, on scoring the goals or you go home. Score goals or go home. For some people, it's all about how many scores. It's not, you don't, they don't care how many legs were broken. They don't care how many people were injured. They don't care how many people were carried out on stretchers because they were injured during the, the, the football match. They don't care how many yellow cards they get. All they want is that they must score and they must win and they must get the goal. It appears that these two opinions are two sides of a coin in some ways. But the thing is, in your life, how do you approach the soccer of your life? Some people see it as something that is beautiful. That means just live a beautiful life. Play by the rules. Don't commit crimes. If you are working somewhere, just do your best. If you are promoted, fine. If you are not promoted, at least you derive the pleasure in service. But for some others, it's a do or die thing. In a place of work, they don't mind to plug the downfall of a colleague. They don't mind to work against even the progress of the company so long as they are going to be praised. They don't mind to sell their companies. They don't mind to sabotage the effort of their colleagues. They don't mind to do things that's going to spoil the whole process just for them to score goals. This approach to life, some people bring the same thing even into the marriages they have. For some, marriage is supposed to be a beautiful experience where the husband and wife love one another, where they do things together, where they watch or look after one another, where they watch the bath of one another, where they are not desperate in scoring goals, they are not desperate in winning arguments. They are not desperate in being right every time when it comes to matters of squabbles and quarrels. Where they don't hurt one another just to score a point. Where they don't lie, cheat or deceive one another just to be seen as a nice person. The approach to football is the same approach to families and marriage matters. For some people, for some people, it is a battleground to be married. And you see husband and wife scheming against one another, plotting lies against one another, and laugh at them. calling attention to the flaws of one another, emphasizing the mistakes of one another, amplifying the imperfection of one another. Why do people do this? Why do people look at life this way? Well, what I say about this is. In as much as football match is beautiful, there's also the technical things, there's also the know-how part of it. There's also the struggle part of it. When a ball is passed to you, you have to run and make effort at least. Even if you know you are not going to score, at least make effort. That's what's going to make your coach not to remove you from the next match. You know that the ball is going off and then you still run after it. That's what people want to see. They want to see you make the effort. So the effort is important and the beauty is also important, but not at all cost. And that is why in real life football situation, when a particular player is being cruel, a particular player is injuring others, the referee will give the yellow card at least to one, and after a while, they will give what? They give the red card, because you are not fit to be here. You are not playing this game by the rules. Not that footballers don't cheat sometimes. But what they do is that there are people watching and there are rules to be, uh, to, you know, for them to abide by. Let me mention another thing for you, then we'll now wrap it up together. A further analysis of football match shows, just like in real life situations, there are numerous skills that should have a prevalence in what you do. There should be a combination of your physical ability, the technical, the perceptive, the cognitive and the decision-making skills, decision-making skills with performance and goal orientation, you have to put all of those things together when you play the real football matches, the games. The same thing when you play the games of life. You also need to have technical know-how. 
we need to have the wisdom we need to understand what is going on you need to analyze your opponents you need to understand that some people are actually playing against you you need to be smart you need to be wise you need to be cautious you need to be careful and you need to be dedicated you need to be focused you need to understand the people you are playing with as the opponent are they sharks and you also need to understand the people you are playing with within your own team are they lazy bones that will frustrate your efforts are there people amongst them that are trying to sabotage your efforts in the games of life you may all be in the same team but do they is it all of them that really want you to succeed you may be in the same team and they're the ones that are throwing things on your path so that you can fall you may be in the same team but they will not pass the ball to you so that you can score Maybe in the same team, they know you are positioned to achieve greatness for the team. But what if they don't support you? What if they don't like you? What if they don't want you? What if they think you are too arrogant? What if they think you are too popular? What if they think you are the only one that everybody is talking about? What if they think you are Rashidi Yekini? You are the only one that is shown in all adverts as the best player. What of the remaining 10 of us? What if you are like Yusuf? in the midst of 11 other children. One of them may like you, the remaining 10 may despise you. The same way we have football team, that's the same way we have people around us. We may be in the same team, but not all of them may be in your support. Joseph, that is Yusuf, he is also the same, from the same father as the other children. But that didn't make them not to throw him into the well. The football team already, thank you. 11 against 1. Subhanallah. How are you going to explain it? 11 people working against 1. Anyway, amongst that 11, there's Benjamin, Bunyamin, who was also a supporter of Yusuf. But you see, when Yusuf was to be thrown into the well, he couldn't do anything. So if you have your supporter, you can have them. But how many people are actually your supporter? I think this football thing is very interesting about our lives. And I think if you look at it very well, you are going to see a whole lot of things that will be playing out for us to understand. Also, when you are trying to score the goals of life, you should understand your body movement, you should understand your strong point and your weak point. You should understand very well if your left leg is better developed than your right leg in kicking balls. You should understand what angle you can actually kick the ball and you can score. You should understand whether you are a leftist or a rightist when it comes to penalty shootouts. You have to understand whether which of your legs is actually developed more for long kicking and which of them do you use for dribbling. You must understand the movement of your body. You must understand if you are a fast runner or you must understand if you are a slow dribbler. And maintain your lane, day your lane, like they say. Stay where you are and achieve the best of what you can. Because you are a goalkeeper doesn't mean that when you now see the striker not playing well, you leave your goal post, you say you want to go and play at the space of the striker. That's going to be a disaster for the team. Please tell me, what do you say of a goalkeeper who thinks the other players are scoring and he also wants to score? So he leaves his goal post and he goes to the 18 of the other team and he was standing there so that they pass the ball to him. What's going to happen to that team? It's not all of us that need to score as in physically or outrightly scoring the way we see it. Some other people may have to do the job for us. In other words, understand how it is going. Understand the game of your life. Understand the match of your life. Know when to strike and know when to defend. And let me mention this point for you so that you can have your lives back. While working on your goal post, you need to understand very well that a 90 minute drama is what you have. Each story, each football match is a story yet untold. One match may not be exactly the same as the next. The, the players may be the same players, the teams may be the same, but they are not all going to be the same outcome when they begin to play this match. Each story is yet untold. We can predict, we can foretell 
but nobody can tell what's going to happen at the end of the match. It so happens sometimes that some seasoned player will even confess to you that there seems to be a lock factor in football matches. There seems to be a lock factor. Sometimes they wonder how did we even manage to win this match. You get to see a lot of that when there's penalty shootout. And then you see, uh, what do we call this one? Sudden death comes up. And then we get to see who is going to win at the end of the day. At a point in the football matches, some of them realize that no matter how well you have trained, there's a lucky factor in some of these games. Understand very well that the game of our lives, we can't always predict. We can't always be sure. We can't always be sure that you are going to score. We can't always be sure that you are going to win. We are all at different times in a particular 90 minutes duration of our life existence. Let us say that we are only in this world for 90 minutes each. All of us. Just the same way we also all have 24 hours a day. All of us. What we are going to achieve within that 24 hours is all depending on you and sometimes on some other factors that you can't really fathom. Let us say we only have 90 minutes to play on earth. 90 minute duration for some people is very fast. 90 minute duration for some people is very slow. It depends on what you are doing and what you are engaged in. It depends on your environment and the kind of things you are set up to do. It also depends on the number of goals you're actually looking for to win necessary points for your next match. The tension, the twists and turns of the match, the things that we watch when we are playing and, and the things that we see unfold as the match is going on, the heroes of the matches of our lives, the villains of the matches of our lives, the tears and the laughters of every football match, the triumphs and the tragedies of all matches, they are all the things that bring us together as human beings. We all have these games to play in life, and we are both players and spectators at the same time. Like we said earlier on, you are a player. People are watching you the same way you are watching others. We have seen, and we are seeing all sorts of goals, all sorts of games, all sorts of goals, the deftness and the touches of the balance and the boldness of the player, the balance and the control of the ball, the telepathic vision, the special wonder goal, the one that caught the goalkeeper by surprise, the something out of nothing, the mesmerizing tricks, the practice that we do, the hard tricks that we do in order to score goals in life, they are all part of the thing you have to bear in mind if you are playing the football matches of your life. If you must score a goal, you have to understand that the game is truly beautiful if we play it creatively. The game of life is beautiful if you play with the craft, with the technique, the guile, the strategy. And whatever the result is, whether you win or you lose, at least you have enjoyed the beauty of playing the game by the rules. Your conscience is clear. You didn't break anybody's legs. You didn't break anybody's heads. You didn't put a stop to another person's career because you are struggling to score. Your conscience is clean because you didn't enjoy any player that is going to be rendered incapable or incapacitated for the rest of his life. You struggle to win, you struggle to score, but not at the expense of the life of other, other players like you, especially those who are in the opposition, those you are playing against. Understand very well and you recognize that there are so many hands that are unseen in the games of life that we play, just like we have in football. Many people have contributed to our opportunity to play the games of life. After all, some people give back to you. Some people give back to you. If your parents didn't give back to you, you would never have had the opportunity to play the game of life at all. It's because you are here. That's why you are playing. What if they didn't pick you? What if you were not born? What if you were not brought up by them? You have to appreciate those people that contributed to your opportunity to play the games of life. You have to appreciate the boot scrapers. The people who kept the boot and they kept washing it. The people who pushed the mowers and those who made the field to be very level and green. The people who pushed the mowers and the water sprinklers. The grass growers. 
the one who keep the pitches clean, the one who paint the white and green, who paint the white of the marks on the green of the grass. Those who serve food to the players, those who serve in the canteens, all of those who work on scene, those people that you don't know that they've contributed, you must look for them and appreciate them. If some people didn't take care of the football pitch before you came, I wonder where you are going to play. What if the grasses that you see are actually thorns? I don't know if you are going to play there. What if some people didn't provide the boots that you wore to protect your feet in playing the games of life? What if some people didn't ensure that there were no thorns inside those boots with which you are running about and you are shining everywhere? You have to appreciate even the traffic directors, those who pick the litters, the rubbish collectors, all the stewards, all of those who cooked for you and you ate, all of the information sharers, those who laid the tables, those who connected the cables, those who put the things in place for you, those who help the ones that help those that help those that help you. You must remember them, you must appreciate them. There are those who show you the seats, there are those who made your day to be complete, there are those who actually trained and educated you. In playing the games of life, some people showed you the way, some people taught you the rules, some people showed you the game, and some people ensure that your welfare is taken care of. Those who contributed to your training as you were growing, those who ensure that you are upright, those who ensure that you are healthy, those who ensured that you don't have ulcer, those who fed you at the right time, before you grew to become who you have become, those who took you to the hospital, those who that you called when you are in trouble, when you are in crisis, those who are always there to support you, in one form or the other, from primary education to secondary, from secondary to tertiary, from tertiary to those who showed you where you could get a job, from all of that to those who show you the sweetheart and the darling you're eventually married as your husband or your wife. All of these people are part of those who contributed to the games of our lives. You must appreciate them. Just like in normal football, the ones who iron the flags that we see flying, those who unfold the nettings, those ones who paint the goalposts white, those people who attended to you, don't forget to remember them. Appreciate those who cheer you on year after year. When you pass exam, when you sat for exam, when you wrote your continuous assessment, the teachers who told you well done, the teachers who patted you in the back and said, yes, your essay was right, the teachers who looked at you and said, yes, you did well, but you need to do more. All of these are part of those who cheered you up and they made you to become who you are today. The sacrifices that they all made, the commitments that they all took, those who shout out from the stands, those who cheer you up, those who applauded you, those who clap their hands, every woman, every man, every grandfather, every grandmother, every, every neighbor, every sibling, every uncle Abu Bakr, every auntie Mariam, every nephew, every nieces, every cousin and brothers and sisters, all the clan, all of the Jamaa in your mosque, all of the people that surround you. If these people were not there in your life, you could never have scored any goal of life. If for any reason or by God's will, you are able to score some goals in life, never forget all of these unseen hands that were around to cheer you up, including those who gave you troubles, including the teachers that caned you when you were in school. Yes, including your boss that threatened you with sack letter, including those who eventually sacked you and made you leave the place to go look for something better with your life. These are part of the unseen hands. Don't think anything went by accident. All of them need to be respected and they need to be appreciated. All those respected names who did wonders in our lives as we grew up, they changed the games for us. Those memories that we can relive again and again, those foundations of our past life, they build to lead and build to last all of these things that we're enjoying today. We must immortalize them, we must remember them. Those who toiled and gave their all, those who fought every single battle for us, those who answered every call, those who always understood, even when we don't understand ourselves. Those who are ready to listen, even when you really had nothing to say. Those who are ready to offer guidance when they saw you going astray. Those who played with us, those who helped us 
those who may help us to make those grades in life. We never could have played alone by ourselves on the pitch of life if these people were not present there for us. Those are the people who got our dreams to be lived into reality. They are the ones who trained us. They are the ones who managed us. They are the ones who picked the teams that we played with. They are the ones who decide those who should be your friend, who, who should be your friend. Our parents and our uncles, they were very mean towards us. That ensure that we don't play with the wrong teams. That ensure that we don't play with bad friends. To ensure that bad influences do not take us away from our, from our goals in life. All of these things are the things. We should all be grateful eventually, whether we score goals or not, to the friends that we love, the friends that we are playing with, the friends that we have played with. And we should all be grateful whether you will score goals or not for whatever little achievement we have been able to make. When we kept running around in the pitch, we were running around for a purpose. We may not be the ones that score the goals, but we are happy and lucky to be part of the team. Be contented with being part of that team, the team of people who are progressive, the team of those who give chances to others so that they can also shine, the team of those who recognize the effort of everyone, even when their legs didn't touch the ball for more than one or two seconds throughout the 45 minutes or 90 minutes of the game. We must appreciate those friends who stood by us in playing the games of life so that this goal post that we have they maintain it for us, they allow it to be there for us, and they always give us the opportunity to score in our own unique ways. And above all, let us be grateful that we have the privilege of playing together on earth. We all came here for a purpose, and we are all here for a specific time. Whether you score the goals or not, be grateful for the gift of life, and be grateful for the opportunity that you're also here to play your own part, to play your own role, to play your own number in the football match of life. May all my make it easy for us. I will stop here, inshallah. There's a break for Tevez. Oh, First through, Lucarelli gets around the lead.